Hello, and welcome to our Easter Sunday service. He is risen, he is risen indeed. I found myself over the last week thinking about this past year, and there are many words and thoughts that come to mind. I'm sure we can all think of different circumstances that we have faced and have overcome over this past year. Days of reworking schedules, fear and anxiety of what is to come, the insurmountable pain of significant loss and the ability to grieve with people. However, today I am reminded of our Lord and Savior. Today we rejoice in a faithful and loving God. The one who has conquered death and grave. Sin is defeated. We have victory in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He is risen. He is risen indeed. I pray this service will be a blessing to you, that in the midst of everything going on, that we can take this moment to rest in our Savior and know that he is all that we need. Cadet April Barthau is going to join me in a responsive reading, reading the congregation piece. Will you join with us? Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. He is risen. He is risen indeed. But Mary stood, weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over and looked into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting there. The body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. He is risen. He is risen indeed. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, And the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then his disciples rejoiced when they saw that it was the Lord. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? He is risen. He is risen indeed.
Please join with me in reading our scripture this morning, taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 20. The Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 to 9, and it's entitled, The Resurrection of Jesus. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples sent out towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he meant that he must rise from the dead. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Oh, oh, oh. 
Let us bow together in prayer. Dear God, as we come into your presence to celebrate Easter, we pray that your Holy Spirit would move among us, each one of us today, and be present in each of our homes. We remember the death of Jesus Christ, our Savior. We remember the great burden of sin that you carried. You, Lord, love us, despite our sinful nature. Today we remember the great joy and hope we have in your resurrection. Today we celebrate your triumphant victory over death. You alone, Lord, can conquer the grave. You have saved your creation by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Savior. You, Lord, are our hope and our salvation. I pray for Major Andrew as he comes to share the gospel message today. Speak through him, God, and speak to our hearts. I pray that our hearts and minds would be open to your word today. We praise you in this Easter season as we remember your great love and that you overcame the grave. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Well, thank you to the cadets who have led us so thoughtfully in this Resurrection Sunday service. I want to focus our attention on just one verse from the passage that was read earlier, and that's John's Gospel, chapter 20 and verse 9. It reads this, They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Now, I would like for us to examine the Scriptures and to understand that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Well, what scriptures would have been referred to? Well, commentators have suggested that uh, Psalm 16 would be one. It reads, from starting at verse 9, Therefore my heart is glad, and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You make known to me the path of life, and you will fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Other scriptures that perhaps would have been known at the time include Hosea, chapter 6 and verse 2. It reads, After two days he will revive us, and on the third day he will restore us, that we may live in his presence. There's also some foreshadowing which is understood from Jonah, and in particular, chapter 1 and verse 17 of Jonah, when the Lord provided a huge fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. We can also recall the uh, life and events and teaching and, uh, and leadership of Jesus, and I think particularly of earlier in John's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 18 to 22, where Jesus has cleared the temple from the uh, money changers and those that were selling sacrifice animals. And the religious leaders came to Jesus and asked him this, what sign can you show to prove your authority to do all of this. And Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. They replied, it has taken 46 years to build this temple and you're going to raise it in three days. But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. Luke also records in his gospel, after Jesus uh, was raised from the dead, he appeared to his disciples in Jerusalem. Luke 2, verses 44 to 47. Jesus appears and he says to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds 
so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this was what was written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations. So friends, here we are today commemorating the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to quote that to you. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations. Luke 24, 46 and 47. I had quoted just a moment ago from Psalm 16 and also from the prophets Hosea and Jonah. What is written about Jesus in the Law of Moses, those first five books of the Old Testament? Well, commentators would direct us to Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, and a, a term that is referred to as the Proto-Evangelion. Protos being first, and Evangelion meaning gospel or good news, and put together they become the first gospel or the first good news. Genesis 3.15 says, The Lord God said to the serpent, who is identified in Revelation 12 and 9 as the devil, as Satan. The Lord God says, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. He who will crush the head of Satan is Jesus. Also from those uh, books of Moses uh, would be Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 15 where Moses says the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you from your fellow Israelites you must listen to him and the law of Moses contains a foreshadowing of the coming of the Messiah and Jesus aligns himself many times to these foreshadowings for instance references to the law of Moses. Jesus is the Passover lamb. Those who put their faith in his death and the blood he shed are resurrected from judgment that is to come. John 3 verses 16 to 18. And like manna in the desert, Jesus is the bread from heaven. John 6 and 51 that bread that satisfies our spiritual hunger and gives us life. And like the water that sprang from the rock, Jesus is the living water, John 7 and 37, that satisfies our spiritual thirst. And like the snake in the desert that was lifted up so that those who were bitten by deadly snakes could look upon it and live, Jesus was lifted up so that we who are trapped in deadly sin can look upon Jesus and be saved from spiritual death. John 3, 14 and 15. On this Easter Sunday, we stand in a privileged position 2,000 years after Jesus' resurrection. We have the recorded New Testament. We have centuries of biblical and theological thought that helps us understand the fulfillment of those things written about Jesus in the Law of Moses and in the Prophets and in the Psalms. For Peter and for John, who ran to the tomb on that Easter morning, they didn't fully understand the meaning of the scriptures, which foretold of the resurrection, but from that moment... At least they recognized that the absent body of Christ affirmed the truth that he must rise again. The foundational verse that I'm drawing our attention to from that Resurrection Sunday morning account from John's Gospel, chapter 20 and verse 9, they still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Why is it that Jesus had to rise from the dead? Jesus had to rise to life again so that we can affirm this Easter Sunday morning that he is risen. He is risen indeed. 
Jesus had to rise to life again so that we can believe that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus had to rise to life again so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Jesus had to rise to life again so that we would have hope, a hope for eternal life. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 and 14, and said, And now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died so that you will not grieve like people who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. We put our faith and trust in him. We who believe in a resurrected Lord Jesus, we too will be raised to life again. This is our eternal hope. My friends, be affirmed in our faith and the certainty we have of eternal life. Affirm with me our doctrinal statements. Doctrine 6, we believe that the Lord Jesus Christ has, by his suffering and death, made atonement for the whole world so that whosoever will may be saved. Doctrine 11, we believe in the immortality of the soul, the resurrection of the body. Do you believe these things? Be strong in your faith and the resurrection power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My friend, if you today are one who has not yet placed your faith in the resurrected Lord Jesus, if you've not received the gift of forgiveness of sin and the promise of eternal life, then I invite you to pray with me. Lord Jesus, I do understand now from Scripture that you did rise to life again. Lord Jesus, I do understand now that you had to rise to life again and prove your victory over death. Lord Jesus, I do understand now that you gave your life as a ransom for sin, for my sin. And Lord Jesus, I understand that as I admit my sin to you and ask your forgiveness, you are faithful and just and will forgive my sins and cleanse me from my sin. Jesus, I receive you as Lord of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for this gift of eternal life that you promise and give as evidence through the rising to life again. On this Easter Sunday, I do understand scripture that you did rise to life again. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. If you have prayed this prayer with earnestness and sincerity and for the first time have received this eternal life, that Jesus speaks of, then I invite you to go and tell someone about it. Find your core officer, find a salvationist to share and to be encouraged and learn to grow in your new faith in Jesus Christ. May each of us say with certainty on this resurrection Easter Sunday morning that he is risen, he is risen indeed. God bless you.
Well, as our service comes to a close today, we want to thank you for joining us this morning. We like to rejoice that the Lord is risen. And as we sing this final song, we're going to be singing, Christ the Lord is risen today. Verse 2 of that song says, Love's redeeming work is done, fought the fight, the battle won. Lo, the sun's eclipse is o'er, lo, he sets in blood no more. And we're going to sing all five verses led by the band this morning. And once again, thank you for joining us. God bless. He is risen. Oh, <laughs>